So now we're reading both the humidity and the temperature and showing them in these nice little graphs. Hey, what's up guys? Today we're going to talk more about using Blink with any of your Arduino boards. In this case, we're going to stay with the ESP8266, in this case, the Wemos D1. But this will work with any board that has Wi-Fi. So, in the first video, we looked at using Blink to control uh, different pins on your board. In this case, we're going to use Blink to look at reading data from a sensor. And as you can see here, we've got your basic DHT11 sensor, and it is connected to pin digital 6. Other than that, it gets 5 volts in ground coming right from the board. That's it for your hookup. Whoops. Sorry about that. <laughs> There's nothing else you need to do for hardware. Let's go take a look at the code. All right, so here's our code for reading data from the DHT11 sensor. Now, again, this is from the examples, but it took a little bit of massaging. So blink, yes, under more, and then DHT11. So when you create your app on the blink, you're gonna need to get your authorization token and of course you'll need to add in your own SSID and password. Now the app in the example is written for Ethernet. I'm using Wi-Fi so a couple changes had to be made. We had to add in ESP8266 Wi-Fi and then down here where we go blink begin it just said authorization you need to put in the authorization the SSID and the password. All right, so once we've got all of our credentials ready, then we need to define what pin the DHT is on. In this case, I'm using digital six. You need to define which type of DHT sensor you're using. In this case, I'm using an 11. Then it creates an instance of the DHT called lowercase DHT using DHT pin and type. And we're gonna use a function called blink timer called timer and you can see it says what this function does is it sends Arduino's uptime every second to virtual pin 5 in the app the widget reading frequency should be sent to push so we have a function called void sensor when void sensor runs it grabs a humidity reading and a temperature reading from the DHT sensor it checks to make sure that it is actually reading from them if not it will up output an error code here to uh, the serial port. Now in this case it's running just fine so there's no uh, error code down there. And then you can send the values. So here's where you're sending the values. It's really simple. Blink dot virtual write to pin virtual 5 and the value. Blink virtual write the pin virtual 6 and the value. So we're sending our humidity value which we got from the DHT sensor here by using the DHT read humidity function to virtual pin 5 and we're sending the temperature to virtual pin 6. That's it for our, sens our send sensor. Oh, 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 can't talk. Now down here in our setup we have our serial begin 9600 for our debug which is useful because here is our window and it tells you it's connected to Wi-Fi, gives you your IP address and it lets you know you've connect, collect, connected to the Blink cloud and that everything's ready. Then we begin our Blink with Blink.begin authorization SSID and password and we need to begin our DHT function. Now we're going to set our interval for the timer and we're going to send it every second but you can make it every five minutes if you want it really doesn't matter then it's going to call that function send sensor okay simple simple down here in your loop blink runs timer runs that's it there ain't no more 
it's pretty simple. All right, let's go set it up on the phone and see how it works. All right, so for the setup on your phone or tablet, I've just created two graphs and we'll click there. You can see how I did it. The first one is called humidity. I gave it a blue color. The pin it is connected to is virtual five. I set the value from zero to a hundred. It has a label of percent and it will read whenever data is pushed to it. The next graph, the temperature graph, labeled temperature colored red, zero to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, also a push. That's really it. There's nothing else to it. And you can see that it is running just fine. About every second it's getting a data read from the DHT11 sensor. And everything is working out very nicely. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. In our next video on Blink, we're going to talk about how to use Blink on a board like an Uno or a Mega without built-in Wi-Fi. So stay tuned. That's it. I'm out of here. Peace.